pharmacology in this outline because it says A1, okay? And then it says B1 on the very tip top. This is something you would have picked up earlier. And then uh, the C is for week two. And on, it says on week two to bring your Taylor textbook. But she'll probably talk about that on Wednesday and remind you about that. So here's just some of your outlines for some of your lectures on medication administration, which will start tomorrow. Okay? So I just want to go over that before I forgot that. Okay. Uh, you should also have gotten something that says symbols. Did everybody get that? That'll be useful when you take the medical terminology test. Okay. I got those little things out of the way. Yeah. I did not get that one. Did not get that one. All right. We should get you one. Did you not get one I know? Okay. This is something you would have picked up when you picked your syllabus up. It'll say on the top, Baptist Health College, Little Rock, Pharmacology. It's just making sure you've got those things. One more. All right. It's all right. We still got a few more. It's okay. It's a okay. Everything's a okay. All right. I know this is a lot of material. I know it's a lot of material. All right. Let's talk about the calendar first. Let's do that. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'm telling you, it's not right having a holiday on Monday. 
I'm never wrong. Um, okay, then on Friday, those of you that need to take CPR, I'll see you, okay? That's at the Barrow. Does anybody not know where that is? It's across the street from, there used to be a Target there a long time ago. It's right by the freeway. It's, it's an old church, actually. Okay, so if you should be able to, it's on, um, it's right, if you're coming from Conway and you get off on uh, 6.30, go 4.30, get on 6.30, take the John Barrow exit, and it's right by the exit. You're going to turn right. You're going to turn right. If you're coming from North Little Rock, you're going to turn left, go across the freeway, and it'll be on your right. If you get to 12th Street or to Canis, you've gone too far. Okay? You get to the Shipley Donut place on your left, you've gone too far. You go ahead and get your donut. <laughs> All right? Uh, there's a really great barbecue place there, Sam's Barbecue, if you like that kind. Mm-hmm. It's good. Uh, so, and then Friday afternoon, uh, at 1 o'clock, you'll come and uh, you'll have a sepsis lecture with Miss Oglesby right there. So there's your SO is Miss Oglesby. Super octane right there. SO, <laughs> super octane. Hey, you like that? Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. All right, so then the next week. So there's usually two weeks on every page of the calendar. <laughs> Then the next week we're going to do vital signs. You know, earlier when the uh, lady talked about TPRs, does everybody know, does anybody know, not know what TPR is? Tent pulse and respirations. We were just talking about. They may not know what TPR is. So <coughs> tent, we're going to learn about temps, pulses, and respirations, and, and blood pressures. So you're going to learn about that sort of thing. And then you see your first skills lab is on that Tuesday. We're going to start practicing that. We're going to teach you how to do a bed bath. I know, how, you know, how many of you know how to take a bath? Hopefully all of you. Uh, but you, some of you have never bathed the patient, so we're going to help you with that. We're going to teach you how to wash your hands. We're going to do, this day's a pretty easy day. And then again, on the next Thursday, you have another computer day. And you notice I kind of switched it. So every time there's a computer day, I try to switch. So that the people that are the B group get to come in early and get to get out of here early and go play with their boys or their girls or their dogs or their cats. Uh, you don't want to play with my cat because she's mean. Um, she really is. She's the meanest cat I've ever had. Uh, and crazy. So legitimate. Um, and then the A group will come in the afternoon. So there's like the first week. And then you can see the rest of the things. There's some other things. We'll have lecture on Monday. We'll have skills lab on Tuesday. We'll have uh, pharmacy or um, pharmacology on Wednesdays. And then there's another computer day. This professional writing, you, well, it's not computer day, sorry. That we'll have people that come in here and talk to you about best training, HIPAA, and corporate compliance, and then professional writing. You'll get out of here a little before three. Uh, the lady from the library will be coming, Miss Reed. And then you have a HESI case study that's going to be due here. And we'll be talking to you when we do the computer lab. The lady from El Sevier, which is uh, one of your texts, uh, will be coming and we'll talk to you about how to get online, how to do case studies. And we're going to talk more about the case studies and some of that other stuff in a little bit. Then you see the second week, again, lecture, skills lab, lecture, and then here's another computer day, EPIC. That's our documentation system, is EPIC. You're going to have two different EPIC days, so that's just one of them. That's the first one. And then you've got another HESI case study that's going to be due. And then I have opened a few days. You will notice there are a few days <coughs> on the calendar uh, at various times. If you feel like you need to practice in the skills lab, like maybe you didn't get that bed back right, or maybe you're having trouble getting a blood pressure, I'm going to open the skills lab on these times by appointment, and I will be putting a sheet up on a bulletin board for you to sign up. So if you want to get a partner and you want to come in here and practice taking blood pressures or practice doing pulses and different things like that, you can come in and do so if you feel like you're having trouble. This just gives you a little extra time. I kind of did this because I looked at, at the end of the semester, and some of you have 
had to fill out a survey monkey if you were in general prep or general ed. And I got this idea from the survey monkey because they said, I feel like I didn't have enough time to practice. So I put in some extra practice times for those of you that may feel the need. If you don't feel the need, you don't have to do it. But it is here and you can sign up. Now, if you don't, nobody signs up, I'm gonna have a staff member assigned to that hour or two hours or three, it's usually three. I'll have a staff member assigned for that day and you'll know, hey, I need to go see Miss Manning. Uh, I'm here to practice. If you need our help, we're not gonna necessarily stay in there and babysit you, but we'll be available to assist you if you need us to. So that's what that's about. Um, let's see. And then here's the next, I'm not gonna go with every page, so don't think that, I don't think it can be super good. Um, here is your first medic, medical administration pharmacology exam on August 3rd, not October yet. And um, there again is a skills like practice. You can there, you got a Thursday off. Hot diggity dog. <laughs> so you take the test and you go, thank God that's over. And you can relax that day. And then the next week we're kind of, we're gonna have our medical terminology. You remember when you got those things on welcome day? If you did not get one, you come see me and I will make sure that you have one. You should have got one in that packet of information. And we'll have a lecture before then. You can see that right there. And but you will have your first exam and we'll talk more about that. And then here's another epic day. Now I like having that on Thursdays, but they couldn't come on Thursdays, so that's not that's on Friday. And then you see the other thing here is a prep you. And we're going to talk more about that too in a minute, but that's when it's due. It's really due August the 7th, which is the Sunday, but I put it here to remind you, hey, that's going to be due here. And we'll talk about those in just a minute when we start going with the syllabus, because those are some points that you get. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, very good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, so this is for, uh, and it's probably was here as well. I didn't think about it. Uh, yeah, there's an enrichment exam. Oh, there was an exam one before that. Anytime it says enrichment, that's like an extra. You come in and we're going to talk to you about these are some things you need to focus on when you're studying. We're not going to tell you exactly what's going to be in there, but we may pinpoint it a little closer. Okay, so you, you've got 16 chapters that you've read. We'll say you really need to look at this section. You really need to, remember I talked about heart sounds. Really focus in on this heart sound. You know, depending on who's lecturing, who's doing what. But we will post, usually we'll post study guides on our Moodle, and you'll find out all about Moodle on Thursday. Uh, so we'll post study guides, but this is an extra time that you can come to say, hey, to help you study for your exams. Yes, ma'am. Is that after regular class time? Yes, it's almost always after regular class time. It's not, it's not, we don't take, we don't take well for those, do we? No. No. So it's not, you don't have to stay for it. It's, it's not mandatory. But it's there for you if you do want to stay and, you know, get a little more hint on what you need to focus your studies on. All right, I know that's where I'm going to stop. Any questions about the calendar so far? And you can see it the rest of the way. I will warn you, Ms. Manning's menopausal. So that means I have hot flashes. So if I start taking off my lab coat and sweating like a pig, you know where, what that's about. I'm sorry. It is what it is. As I, that's my new saying. It is what it is. So I use that saying a whole lot now because it is what it is. It works so well. You can't change it, so you might as well live with it. All right. I hate those women that never get those. <laughs> All right, so let's do, let's do 1010. We're going to do 1010 syllabus. So if y'all will get your 1010 syllabus, which is your adult nursing one. Mm -hmm. so look right like there this in the, the chair. Top. But I have to We're not going to go through it. every single page. <laughs> but I want to get the highlights for you, okay? Uh -oh. Is that uh, sheet coming around for um, the, the skills lab? Is that kind of surfacing around? And I sent the roll sheets around. I'm going to have to take one. 
if you miss this much in nursing school, you will not be successful. That little 77 thing I showed you, you won't be there if you miss too much on this time. If you miss a lot, it, does, it really adds up. So also for theory exam, this is one thing I really want to explain to you. Uh, and it's been a little bit of a source uh, in previous classes, but it is the decision that we've made. So you take an exam and you wake up and you're sick. Well, we don't want you here spreading your germs. Don't be coming up here hacking and coughing and peeping. Um, you're, there's going to be a lot of you going to get sick, mainly because you're in a small space. You're going to be around germs you have never been around. I hardly ever get sick. I've been around so many sick people my whole life. I'm never sick hardly ever. Um, um, but, you know, you're going to miss it. Some of you may miss an exam. Some of you may miss an exam. If you miss an exam, there are no makeup exams. At the end, you will take a comprehensive final. And it will replace that grade. So it, your comprehensive final basically counts as two. Now, you're thinking, well, here's what I'm going to do. You know what? I really didn't read up on my cardiovascular stuff like I should have. I just take on government tests. Because I'm going to take a comprehensive final and have to replace that. Or you know what, my buds, they called me. We went down to the beach an extra few days. So I'm not going to take that. Well, you know, I taught in the last semester. Um, that can come back and bite you somewhere. Y'all are sitting on it right now. Where it can bite you. Um, I had one of my students that she missed an exam. She chose to miss an exam. And then guess what? She overslept another exam. So what does that mean? What do you think that means? Big fat goose egg, absolutely. So guess what she didn't do? She didn't make 77%. So guess what? She's sitting next door again. Instead of sitting over here. She did not pass the course because she chose to skip an exam. A lot of our students <coughs> decided not to go to exam last semester. And then when they took the comprehensive final, because it says comprehensive, yeah, what does that mean? Uh-huh, it's all semester stuff. And you know, what you took right now, it's going to be, you know, recalling it. It's a little harder, right? And so they didn't do very well on their comprehensive final. I had 19 not pass. Uh-huh. So guess where they are? They're right back over there instead of so they're not going to be graduating in December. They're going to wait and graduate the next June because they chose to do that. So I would highly recommend that you go ahead and take your exam and not miss them. Now, there's going to be some of you that have changed it. Don't decide not to do that. You know what? You're adults. Y'all are big boys and girls. And y'all can do that if you want to. I just would suggest it. All right, clinical lab. That's not, that's my big preaching job for right now. For right now, um, clinical lab. You can't miss any more than two days. You get a written warning. If you miss more than four clinical days, which will be two weeks basically for you, uh, you'll be academically or administratively withdrawn. Skills lab. You can't miss very many of those. We'll have a makeup day for both clinical and both skills lab. If you have to miss, I mean, it stuff happens. You know, your kids get sick, your husband gets in the hospital, you have a flat tire, you know, all kinds of things can happen. So, you know, if you miss, we'll allow you to make those up, but you just can't miss too many of them. All right, then disability service, Dr. Um, Coleman talked a little bit about that. So if you're a person that needs special testing, um, you know, needs to have, you know, easily distracted or something like that, please see Dr. Coleman as soon as possible so we can make those accommodations for you or, you know, whatever your accommodations need to be. All right, on 3.6, here's all of our exams. You will have eight exams and then you'll have a comprehensive final. Uh-huh. Um, what about if the attendance policy?
policy whenever there's a wreck or something and there's traffic back up? Yeah, we're you know we're a lot more lenient about that. And okay. usually we'll get a gazillion texts and phone calls and you're late. And a lot of times we'll even delay the test by a few minutes if we know a whole bunch of people are late. So yeah, there is forgiveness for stuff like that. Yeah, because that does happen, you know. Especially when school starts back for the real kids. Who am I? Better leave work, leave work, leave house early. Because it's a booger. My granddaughter says it's a booger. booger. All right, um, here's our exams um, one through eight, and then the comprehensive final. They're all worth 100 points, which means there are 100 questions. We allow a certain amount of time per question. They're all pretty much multiple choice. You'll have a little Scantron thing that you'll fill out and we'll grade it via computer. Um, it, um, so it, they're all 100 points, even the final. So you know your final, you miss exam number <coughs> two, we'll replace that like I said, said earlier. Your HESI exam, later towards the end of the semester, it's like third, or it's like the first week, I don't remember when it is. You can find it on your calendar. It's like 30 weeks from when the semester's over. I don't remember what day it's on. But it's a computerized exam that you have to come to the computer lab and take it. You'll be assigned a time again to take that exam and you will come in, it's worth 50 points. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute a little more in detail. And then you have the prep you quizzes. Remember I talked about, you'll see those on the calendar. They're worth 10 points all total. And then you have these HESI case studies, which there are um, 10 of them, 10 of them. And they're worth a total of 40 points. So if you see here, if you do all your HESI case studies and you do all of your prep you quizzes, that's 50 points. How much is that? That's half of an exam. So if you have one exam that you decided to go out with your friends to somewhere and have a good time instead of studying, um, you know, if you do all those, it might give you a little forgiveness on a couple of exams. So I would highly, highly recommend you do those. Also, it, those HESI case studies will prepare you for taking that HESI exam. In my course, it's only worth a half an exam. As you continue, it will be worth an exam and an exam and a half as you continue on. So it does you well to learn how to take those HESI exams very well. The purpose of, you know, every school pretty much has some sort of a computerized test that they test all their students with. And um, it gives you an inkling of how well you might be going to do on your uh, in class that you'll take when you graduate. So here's the information about the prep view, and here's some more information about that HESI. You get uh, a total of 10 points. So some of your points are added at midterm, and some of them are added at the end at the final <coughs> grade. So we will add them as time goes along, and you'll get so you'll have some of it at midterm, so you won't get in trouble at midterm as well. <laughs> the prep views are probably a little easier than the case studies. All right, here's HESI case studies, uh, or in health, uh, excuse me, HESI, the exam. You'll come into the computer room and you'll sign in and you just can't, whenever you're in the computer lab, you can't bring in any food or any drink. About the only foods you can bring if you need to suck on a mint or something like that, you've got a sore throat or something like that. Um, so like a mint would be about it. Uh, no big suckers, but a mint. Um, you can't take your purse in there, you can't take your backpack, you can't take any study materials. And usually what everybody does is bring their stuff and they leave it outside of the little foyer area. And that's okay, you can bring those things. But you just have to leave them out there, you can't bring them into the computer lab. Mainly because, guess what people do with drinks? <laughs> they spill them, of course. Yes. Uh, you can't bring your iPads or your Kindles or any of that other stuff into there. All right. Skills lab, uh, you'll be assigned. These are some of the things, and I'm going to go over the skills lab thing in just a few minutes. I've given you a handout that has all the skills that you'll be doing in the skills lab weeks. These are some of the maintenance, basic nursing skills, 
and again, that's in there, we'll go over some of that. And then you have to demonstrate to us that you know how to give a patient a bath. You have to demonstrate to us that you know how to take a blood pressure, that you know how to do an apical pulse. Then you'll have to demonstrate to us how to do a thorough physical assessment. And Ms. Mizell teaches that class. And um, so you'll learn how to do a full head to toe physical assessment. You'll do that not only in the skills lab, but you'll do it in the clinical setting as well. And then you'll have to write it all up. We'll teach you all that, how to write it up. How to do a urinary catheter, how to insert a catheter. Uh, both male and female, and then sterile gloving, putting on, knowing how to put on sterile gloves, take them off, and how to do what's called a sterile dressing change. And we'll show you, obviously, how to do that. A lot of these skills are in that, those CDs that you had to buy that says Taylor's Fundamental Skills. Um, if you did not get that, I would suggest that you get it and read over and go ahead and watch those at some point uh, in the near future. If nothing else, be sure and go over them the week before we're going to do these skills. So like the week we're going to do urinary catheterization, watch that part of the video. So watch some of those videos that are there. Um, clinical guidelines, we'll go into that a little bit more, but there's just some <coughs> information there about what's going to be expected of you. When we get closer to clinical orientation, we'll talk more about that. Uh, instruction materials, and, and I apologize that I know you got like three different emails from uh, Ms. Sides and myself. Um, let me just explain. You just lose it, I can explain. Um, I kind of took this course over just like a few weeks before we started, not too, too long, because um, I was teaching in another course, and the lady that was teaching this decided to take another position somewhere else, so um, I got, so, I mean, no, no. I, I volunteered to uh, take it over, because uh, I love freshmen, I really do, and um, so that's kind of why this kind of was in a state of flux uh, about the book, so that's that. All right. Another real important page is 3.11. These are your lecture titles. And then it tells you what are the chapters that are involved. So you know before you come to lecture, I'm going to be doing uh, hygiene here on Wednesday that it's chapter 30 in your Taylor book. Now there's a lot of pictures in that chapter. So, you know, that'll be easy to read. When we're talking about studying for lectures, I know it's hard to study and I know it's hard to read all of that stuff. It's a lot of stuff to read. But try your very best to read your chapters if you can before you come to class. Because that way we try our best, most of us <coughs> as faculty, to gear our lecture along with the text. I know I do, and I know think most of us do. And so, but it will behoove you and help you to understand the material a little bit better if you will read the text or at least perhaps glance at it, if nothing else. You, I'm telling you guys, I, I was a young mother when I went to school here. I went to school here. You were, most of you were not born. Um, <laughs> But I did go to school there, and I remember it, it, it's, it's hard. And I went to my kids' ball games, and I had my big old honking fundamentals book up there in the stands, reading and highlighting. They did have highlighters back then. I think they had a color print. But um, it really was a hard thing. You didn't have those nice little things there. Uh, but, um, I, you know, I took my book with me everywhere I went. If I knew I had a doctor's appointment, I took it with me to the doctor. I took my books with me everywhere. So take every single opportunity you have to study and to read because it is, it's, it's tough. Nursing school is tough. Tough, tough, tough. And it, I hate to tell you this, it doesn't get any better as long as you're in nursing school. Okay? Um, it, it's, it's tough. So at least skim through your text. If you don't, can't read it all, at least skim through it. Maybe look at some of the tables. Maybe look at some of the examples and, and in your text. At least do that, if nothing else. 
but there's all the chapters. Now, some of you took the Edwin Wood Speed Reading class, and y'all can read really quickly. Maybe you can read them. All right, 3.13. Uh, goes into the course exams. It tells you which chapters, which lectures will be covered on each exam. So you know exam one is going to cover these six things right here. Is it six? One, two, three, seven. Excuse me. And what chapters they are. Medical, medical terminology, that has its own test, so ignore that. But those other six there listed, that will be covered on your first exam. So you know you can start, you know, start reading on some of that if you have time. Uh, and then I told you uh, our email addresses are here, our office numbers, and our office phone numbers are listed here on 3.14. So if you need to get in touch with us, this is how you can do it via email or uh, come in by our office. Usually most of us, if we're not in the office, we'll leave our little thing on and you can leave a voicemail. So there's all kinds of ways to get in touch with us. And, you know, everybody is individual about their own personal e cell phone. Usually, when you, we make assignments for a clinical, your clinical instructor will usually always give you their cell phone number so you can contact them. So you'll get your individual uh, clinical instructor. So Skills Lab, this is just the form that we use to see how you're doing. And um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Here's all the skills. Hand hygiene, putting gloves on, giving a bed bath, giving a massage, giving doing bed making, positioning, yada, yada, yada. These are all the things that you're going to do, do in the next few weeks. And you get three times to do them. If you don't do them satisfactory the first time, you know, that's okay. Sometimes you just have a bad day and you just didn't do right. So you're going to come back another time. You're going to try to get it right the second time. And then even the third time. I will tell you it's extremely rare that we have very many people that need to do a third time. To do <laughs> very rare. But we do often do those three times. So that's what it is for all of these. I'm not going to show you all that. You can read that. I'm not going to show your intelligence. Uh, clinicals. Again, six weeks. You'll have six weeks of clinicals. These are things that you'll have to do in a clinical setting. You'll have to take a temperature, blood pressure, pulse, all that, physical assessment, and we'll talk about all this other stuff later on. We're not going to get into that because you don't even know what it is and you don't care right now. And I don't blame you because it's a lot of stuff. You give meds, you'll start giving meds before you're done. It's like the